morning church and welcome to the Providence Church Online. It's great to be here with you once again. Thank you for joining us here. Uh, we want to thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Here's a word for you this morning from Numbers 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Would you like to be blessed? Amen. Trust in Jesus. Yes. Believe in Him. You'll be blessed through salvation. You'll be blessed with all things that you need. We want to thank you, Lord. We want to thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the sacrifice. We thank you you have brought us here this morning for this wonderful fellowship of praise and worship and hearing the word. Amen. Father God, we look forward to what you have planned today. Thank you once again Amen. for all the ministries you have for the Providence Church. Those who are new this morning, Amen. we ask, Lord, that you bless them and protect them in the name of Jesus. May your love be upon them and your blessing be upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. Amen. This song we're about to sing is about how God great is. He's an amazing God. He is a God greater than all things. He is the most powerful God that we know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
in Jesus' name. Your name above all names. Amen. Amen.
Lord, have your way in all of us. Thank you, Jesus, for your power and your Holy Spirit. We look forward to what you have planned for us today. We're excited, Father. Excited for your blessing and your spirit and power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, church, for our praise and worship. We want to thank you. Please be seated as we listen to the sermon by dear Pastor Lauren. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Good morning, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ here in Australia, there in the Philippines, and everyone around the world. Welcome to our online divine worship service today. Um, let me take a short time to express my heartfelt thanks to the multimedia team, praise and worship team, Amen. pastors, yes. kids ministry team, Prayer intercessors who are always praying for the nations, praying for the church, praying for all family members of the church, and praying for the salvation of all people around the world. Blessing and shalom to all of you from Christ family here in the Providence Church, where we Victoria, Australia, to the place of where you are right now. May the Lord richly bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Now before the deliberation of God's message today, let us come together in the throne of God's grace in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, great Heavenly Father, we come together at your throne of your grace as your children, as our believers, and as your beloved and chosen people who are waiting for the coming of our glorious Jesus Christ. Lord, we bless your name. We honor you of who you are. We are here to worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray in the name of Jesus that the word of your spirit will be spoken freely, clearly, accurately in the name of Jesus. Lord, I declare before you that I am nothing apart from you. So I pray, Lord God, that your blessing of anointing will flow from your, from, from the top to the head. And even, Lord God, to all who are listening right now, release your fresh anointing and the wisdom of your Holy Spirit to receive your word today. God. Bless every family members and bless everyone who are here right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit. We commit to you everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God. Now, the message today is the beginning of the first series message from the book of Revelation written by John de Villave who wrote the Gospel of John, the first John, second John, third John, and the book of Revelation. As we all know that this apostle is the only who never died through persecution and tortured until he was sent to be isolated and exiled in the island of Patmos. So the content of the book of Revelation is the revelations of Jesus Christ later and message to John the Beloved for the church and individual members of the church. Jesus sent his angel of communication through vision, revealing what must will take place soon. Okay, praise the Lord. Now the promise of this book is a supernatural blessing to those who read it aloud. Amen. Who read it aloud. Now today, the church desire, as we all know what is church, the church is composed of many people who believe in Christ with the invisible head, head who is Jesus. So this is a perfect revelation from the heart of God for the church to be prepared. Praise the Lord. And the desire of Jesus Christ is for all of us church to be blessed and to receive supernatural blessing. Are you desiring to be blessed? Amen. Amen. Me too. I am desiring to be blessed. And what kind of blessing are we desiring right now? Praise God. 
in Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. This is the main text that we are going to um, we're going to receive, praise God, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. I used in Ivy version. The word of God said, Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. Meaning to say that there is a supernatural blessing to be received by those who are reading the book of Revelation loudly. Meaning to say, not you alone. Everybody have to read what, everybody have to hear what you read. Amen? 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 Next, and blessed are those who hear it. Now, not only the speaker here will be blessed. You are listening right there. God promised a supernatural blessing for you who hear it and take it to heart. Hallelujah. When we're listening to the word of God, let us involve our body, our soul, and spirit. And the most important thing is to have a heart evaluation before the Lord. Because the Lord is looking into our heart. Amen. The heart of worship. Praise the Lord. The word of God said, Those who hear it and take it to heart, what is written in it because the time is near okay the message title today is how to receive supernatural blessing today again how to receive supernatural blessing today so now amen, amen. now okay in the Old Testament, one of the great speaker, and he is Moses, he is a great man. He is not an eloquent speaker, but because of the power of the Holy Spirit, because of the power of God that is resting upon him, he was effective to lead the Israelites people to accept from the land of Egypt to the borders of the land of Brahma. He able to persevere until he died. Praise God. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 and 2, this is what he said. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his command I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth, and all these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Now, this time I think it is very important for us to understand the kinds of blessing. And there are two kinds of blessing for us to understand. There is a physical blessing and there is a spiritual blessing. Moses told his people that they will be blessed spirit, uh, physically, physically blessed. Okay, physically blessed if they fully obey the word of God. Praise the Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15 to 16, jump to 19. When he was in his dying stage, meaning to say he is near death point. He said in verse 15, See, he told his people or God's people, the Israelites, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. In verse 16, for I command you today to love the Lord your God. Do you really love the Lord your God? Amen. To walk in obedience to Him and to keep His commands, decrees and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. This day, in verse 19, he said, I call the heavens and the earth as witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. And then the word of God said, if we continue to read it, he said, choose life, choose a blessing. 
Do you believe that, church? Yes, Lord. And it is very important for us to study the Word of God and meditate it day and night. There is always promise to those people who are equipped by the Word of God and to obey what is written in it. To desire not to miss one step of obedience, but to continue to move forward with extra steps of obedience. And you will never lose your track. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number two, the Lord instructed to Joshua. Joshua is the successor of Moses in Joshua chapter 1 verse 7. The Lord told to Joshua, be strong and be very courageous. Be careful to obey all the laws my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Do you believe that the word of God is very powerful and true? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. And I personally experience it in my life. I am now 46 years old. There is blessing when we set our mind to obey the word of God. That is why we need to be diligent to study the Word of God every day. And the secret of prosperity, blessing, and victory is there. Praise God. Jesus said, in John chapter 8, verse 51, Verily, truly, I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. Who desire to have life? Amen. No one desire to, to die. Am I right? And this time it is important for us to discover the three kinds of death. We need to understand the three kinds of death. This revealed to God, uh, the, this revelation I received just this morning. The three kinds of death that the church should fully understand this day. The first one is the physical death. Physical death. This kind of death is never to be worried about to those who are in Christ Jesus. According to Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, Paul said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Now if you are in Christ right now, never to be worried about the death, COVID, any forms of death because according to Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27, for everyone is appointed to die once and after that judgment. So that is the physical death. Everybody have to die physically. And the death of a Christian is not the end of everything, but it is the beginning of your eternal life forever with Jesus. Praise the Lord. It's so sad. It's painful to lose someone. But if your family members are now in Jesus Christ, even they die, it's their day. If I die today, I am sure it's my victory. Glory to God. The second death is eternal death. Now this kinds of death is a final destination of those who completely reject Jesus Christ as God, as Lord, and as personal Savior. Those who position themselves to disobey to, 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 to stand against Jesus. Okay? Since our body is, this body that we have is temporary. But the spirit and soul that we have inside is eternal. Praise the Lord. So, in Revelations chapter 20 verse 14, Then, Death and Hades will thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Now, eternal death is 
definitely opposite of the eternal life. If there is eternal life, there is eternal death. Okay, after we die once again, <laughs> we will face judgment. And there, is, there are only two places are waiting for you and for me. The eternal death will be spent in hell. Where the worms died not. Where all evil, demons, Satan, or Satan, or wicked people, or very bad people are there. So noisy there. The smell is really very bad there. Noisy, restless. Okay? And it is eternal pain. Okay? It is eternal pain. You will never die there. That is our final choice. Okay? Praise the Lord. And no one can escape. There is no fire except in hell. The fire, the, 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 the fire cannot be quenched according to Mark chapter 9 verse 46. Ah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, the question is, if you know that there is eternal eternity, where will you spend your eternity? Hell, where in it is eternal death, or heaven, where we spend our eternal life with our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, the third kinds of death is spiritual death. This kind of death can be solved only by receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. According to John or 1 John chapter 5 verse 11 to 13 NIV version. And this is the testimony God has given us eternal life and this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. In verse 13, the Word of God said, I write these things to you who believes in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Who is the Son of God? The Son of God is Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? Jesus is God. Jesus is Lord. He came from heaven to earth to show the way and from the earth to the cross. He shed His blood to wash our sins away. Praise God. If we truly believe from our heart, the promise of Jesus said, He said, I will come in. <laughs> Praise God. And He will make our heart as His home. The home of the Holy Spirit. How beautiful to, to hear it, right? That your heart, my heart, is chosen by God as His home. And this is through our Lord Jesus Christ alone. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. Do you believe? Now the second question, we are now going to end. Very near. Very happy. Huh? Are you happy? Huh? Are you happy? Because we are now going to end. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord always. Okay, the second question to answer, my brothers and sisters, is do you believe that we are now in the last days? Do you believe that we are now in the last days? That is why we need to know how to receive the supernatural blessing. I believe that we are now in the end times or last days. Because the prophecy and science is clearly now on the show. Okay? It's clearly now on the show. Praise God. The world television news is always bring bad news every day. Do you agree with me? Try to, try to, try to evaluate, evaluate the, the news now. Hmm. Few news would give you, you know, joy. Very few. Okay. Maybe just 10% out of 90%. Right. Praise the Lord. But we have the reason to rejoice because the Lord Jesus is in our hearts. Amen? So... So sad news. The millions of deaths around the world caused by COVID. The more than 2,000 deaths caused by earthquake in Haiti. 12,000 injured and 52,000 52, 
2,000 homes was destroyed last week. And just newly, new, current news last night, the 60 people died caused by multiple terrorist attack in Afghanistan and 140 wounded. Is it good news? Bad news? All right? So the question, if we're going to look around, listening the news, and even focusing our personal situation right now, and is, there is another news, and according to them, uh, truck drivers are striking more than 1,000. So, uh, if you have money, you go and <laughs> buy your needs early as possible. Yeah. Okay? Praise God. But the question is, are we now in the Great Tribulation period? The answer is, not yet. Not yet, because the church is still existing here on earth. Most of us are still enjoying in the service of the Lord. Amen. Are you rejoicing in serving the Lord with me? Amen. Amen. Even we are only, you know, we are limited to have only five, but praise God, five perfect number are here to serve the Lord with gladness. Are you happy with that? Okay, police, 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 we're only five, promise. Even you will come, you're welcome. So, <laughs> according to Psalms 100, um, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. And I believe that those who are listening this time, I believe that you are rejoicing with the Lord today. Amen. So many to say, we are not yet in the great tribulation period. We are still in this grace period. The grace period is still alive. The faithful Christians has a great chance to meet Jesus Christ on the air and not to experience any longer the great tribulations that would happen after the rapture and at the end of the grace period. Okay, we will make it very clear. The rapture that I I spoke last Sunday, it is the end of the grace period. Only the faithful believers, the faithful Christians, the true church of Jesus Christ will be caught to meet Jesus Christ on the air in a twinkling of an eye. The dead in Christ will rise up from the grave. And if you and me are still there during the time, and a twinkling of an eye, we will be changed. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah! We will be changed! Hmm. What kind of... No, I explained it already. So meaning to say, no more time. No more time. Praise God. No second chance anymore. So in Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. This is the word of God. The word of Jesus to the church. Since you have kept my commands to endure patiently. Are you patient? I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Do you think that the trouble that you have now is already a great tribulation? No, it is just a natural tribulation where Jesus said in John chapter 16 verse 33, Jesus said, in this world you have troubles, but take heart. Trust in me, I overcome the world. The natural trouble that we are facing right now in our family, in our personal struggle in life, that is just natural trouble. <laughs> but I am talking about the great tribulations, which is the end of the grace period. That means to say, if we will not properly set up our mind to have a mindset of Christ now. 
there will be a chance that you will be left behind during the day even you are a Christian even you are believers praise God because Jesus will only take the church the faithful church with him and anyone who will be with Jesus in the rapture day will never experience pain, will never experience suffering, will never experience death anymore. Once you are saved in that day, you will always save. This is what John the Beloved testified about his vision in uh, Revelation chapter 6 from 8 to 12. I'm going to read this. Revelations chapter 6 verse 8 I look and there before me was a pale horse its rider was named or named death and Hades was following close behind him they were given power over the fourth of the earth to kill by sword famine and plague and by the wild beast of the earth Okay, just stay in verse 8. Okay, what is the terrible vi virus nowadays? COVID-19, correct? During the Great Tribulation period, my brothers and sisters, there will be a savage beast that will come out from the ground to torture all inhabitants on the earth. Christians and not Christians are going to experience the savage um, a beast, okay, famine, swords, plague, all kinds of pain that is going to be experienced by the people around the world during the Great Tribulation period. Praise the Lord. And the Lord wants us to be aware right now not to scare you not to scare me, but to give us a warning and awareness that today is the time to do the right position in the presence of God. Today is the right time to evaluate our hearts before the Lord. Stop evaluating other Christians. Focus to evaluate yourself according to the word of God. And follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Do no one join you. Do no one join me. Still I will follow. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Amen. Follow Jesus. Praise the Lord. So in verse 9, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. So they called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? In verse 11, Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants their brothers and sisters were killed just as they had been. Who are these people? Okay. The Bible said that not all Christians will be raptured during the return of Jesus Christ. First faces in the air. There are lukewarm Christians that will be left behind so the supernatural blessing that we need to receive today, number one is Jesus Christ. And for us to receive the supernatural blessing worked by the power of the Holy Spirit, obey because Jesus promised a uh, blessing and that is the Holy Spirit to those who obey. When we keep on obeying and obeying according to the word of God, the Holy Spirit in filling will keep on infill us and infill us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And then we can continue to move forward straight to follow Jesus. Praise God. We have enough strength and power to do it. 
So, those lukewarm Christians who are not faithful right now, uh, who are not faithful today, who are complacent, complacent yet, yeah, or complacent Christian today, who are just sleepy, who never do anything, just uh, come to church, sometimes never come, sometimes pray, not pray, sometimes, you know, just, 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 just who they are. <laughs> There is a danger if these people will be left behind. And these people know the truth. And this is not the time for us to do it. We Christians who hear the word of God today, wake up others. Amen. Awake others. Read the word of the prophecy aloud. Do not keep it in your heart. Let others hear. Amen. Let others hear it. Amen. And then check our focus. All right? So, what will happen to those Christians who are left behind? And even those who are non-believers, do you think that they have no chance anymore? There is still chance for them to be saved. And I think in this juncture, I don't have much time to explain the three atonement of blood. Because if there is no blood, there is if there is no blood to be shed, there is no remission of sin. That is why Jesus Christ came to shed his precious blood to wash our sins away and if you receive Jesus Christ and you put yourself seriously to follow Jesus you are the great person who received the supernatural blessing that during the hour or day when Jesus Christ appeared in the air you will be there with me I believe that I will be there in Jesus name Amen that is why even it is too hard to come, it is too hard to do this, you know, it is not easy to be embarrassed, you know, but I will do it, I will do anything I can do. It is not for fame, it is to glorify and honor the Lord our God. I choose to receive the supernatural blessing. The Lord is faithful. So next Sunday, before I speak the conclusion, I'm going to explain the three atonement of sin. So the word of God said here for our conclusion, Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 15 to 16, If you love me, keep my commands. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. So are you happy if your children will happily obey what you commanded them to do? Amen? Usually there is always reward, right? And aside from that, that daughter or son you have, have a very special, special space in your heart, honestly. Yep, I think you agree what I said. Amen. And then in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to 8, Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Whatever reason why you have the reason to be sad, please. Choose to rejoice in the Lord always because this is what the Word of God said. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. In verse 6, do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. Meaning to say, if there is read your Bible every day, there is always a command. Pray every day. Amen. Pray every day with thanksgiving in verse 7. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. 
the last scripture here is in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 to 21. The word of God said, Paul said to the church in Ephesians, Do not get drunk on wine which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs for the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. And in verse 20, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and honor and praise belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to love the Lord with all your hearts. Amen. And let's for, don't forget, love one another as yourself. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Precious Lord, great heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for your words today. It is our great victory. We're in the privilege and the open door for us to make you happy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Still, we can do it, oh God. We are not pressured. We are not controlled by uh, satanic forces. Still, we are here. We are controlled by you to move for what, whatever it is, whatever, Lord. Thank you so much. I praise you and thank you that today you release your supernatural blessing to those who are listening to your word today, O oh God. And then these people are the people who are going to obey. Thank you so much, Lord. Lead your church to a right direction. And Lord, we give you praise and thanks for you are in control of everything. I pray for healing to those who are sick. I pray for peace to those who are in trouble and I pray for uh, direction to those who are lost. I pray to save the people in the whole world of God. I pray that in the name of Jesus the people can see you today and receive Christ as their only Lord and personal Savior. We bless and honor your name. We give you thanks and praise Lord God for the pastors around the world, for the praise and worship team, for the multimedia team, for the for the kids ministry team, for the prayer intercessors, Lord, thank you for the church workers who are faithfully doing their job in the field, Lord God, while waiting for your return. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that's to sustain us to keep going and going until we die, until we see you face to face. We love you, Lord. And thank you for loving us first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church, and have a blessed Lord's Day. May the Lord bless you and may his face shine upon you. In the name of Jesus, God bless you and see you next week. Thank you, Father, for the word that has been spoken this morning. Father God, we shall give you thanks and all the glory and praise, Father. We want to acknowledge our adoration for you too, Father. So this song is for you, Lord. Church, let's sing from our hearts this morning. Raise your hands and give it unto Him. Surrender it all to Him.
Thank you, brothers and sisters. Ah, it's a great time of praise and worship. And I hope you've been blessed with the service. It's amazing. Uh, God's blessing upon us. May His face be upon you and your family. May His protection be upon you and your family and your household. Thank you for joining us here at the Providence Church. Nothing is impossible in the name of Jesus, right? To believe that. I believe, you believe. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. Nothing is impossible. Amen. Amen. God is good all, all the, the time. time. All the time. God, God is good. Amen.